So a little over a year ago, I decided that I wanted to experience VR, particularly Half-Life Alex. It looked so fun and I just, I wanted that experience and I wanted to try it. So what did I do? I bought a laptop, I bought a Meta Quest 2, and I bought the game. You can do Airlink, but I was like, you know, I, I, wanted, I want to have the best connection possible. So I went to the store to get a link cable. This link cable. This thing costs $80. $80. It's a USB Type-C cable. An $80 USB Type-C cable. You know, I, I bring it home and I hook it up and I start playing the game. And at first it's cool, you know, everything's fine. And I just noticed the more I play, the, the, the laggier the game gets, it stutters like crazy. It just doesn't seem good. Steam VR has these weird like glitches on the side and just nothing is working right. Something felt wrong. I don't know what it is, but just it never felt like it would function correctly. I played it for a while and I just kind of stopped after a while because it was kind of a pain in the ass. I would pull it out every once in a while. Half-Life Alex, I mean. I would play it, I'd get so far and I'd put it away. I would juggle between AirLink and the, the, ca the link cable, and I would go back and forth hoping that just somehow the one thing just worked again better. And along that way, I did find a video that I will link in the description of this video that tells you to do some things that no one else really mentions in their videos. And I did those things and it worked really well for a while. Like it was like, oh, everything's back to normal. But I noticed Steam likes to open up on its own now when you open a game. And if that was up and my mouse was like focused on that screen and this screen wasn't like the main thing I had clicked on, the game would stutter. So I would, I would make sure I clicked on the game and it would work for a while. I was like, well, that's weird because I don't have the background set to run at like a lower frames per second or anything. I don't know. I, I, I struggled with that a little bit and I would try Airlink and it felt like crap. It looked bad and sometimes graphics would like pulse. Looks like I'm grabbing boobs. That could have been maybe a bad connection to my internet. My computer is more than capable of handling this game. So I just could not figure out what was happening or why it was happening. I, I you know, I struggled with this for a little while and eventually I do finish the game. It's weird though. At the end of the game, I had this weird glitch where I lost my left hand. And I had to finish the game with only my right hand. I don't think it had anything to do with my connection. I think that was just a weird thing that happened in the game. But hopefully that doesn't happen on my second playthrough. Throughout this whole time, when I play, I would I would look it up. What, what can I do to make this experience better? And I would see so many different things. But it always came back to one thing. People would recommend virtual desktop. And I kept seeing it and I was like, well, I already paid $80 for the link cable. Do I really want to spend another $20 just to play this game? But let me tell you what, okay? That, that $20 virtual desktop app completely puts clown shoes on this link cable. Virtual desktop is magic. And to make sure everything was absolutely perfect, I even went out and I bought another router. I have everything wired up here, but the Wi-Fi is kind of out that way a little bit. It, it works as an extension where you can plug it in wired and it will basically give me my own wireless network in this room here, just for this Meta Quest 2. <laughs> I didn't want anything getting in the way of being able to play these games flawlessly. As soon as I bought that app and I started playing the game with Virtual Desktop, everything was so smooth and in fact, the frames per second were so good, I had to actually turn off like the continuous turning stuff. Like it was so smooth that I never really experienced getting motion sick before because how choppy it always was. I actually had to turn that down. And I was really surprised at how good everything looked. Everything looked very crisp and clear. I always had kind of a hard time like picking out little details because of how blurry everything looked. I don't know what makes virtual desktop do what it does, but it is in my opinion, the only way to play these games. Now, I did have someone tell me that they use their link cable when they're playing rhythm games because there's less latency with their link cable. And if you're playing a rhythm game, you don't want any latency. Now, I haven't really experienced any latency that I can tell when I'm playing Half-Life. It might be there, but I really can't tell. But I'm not really sure how that works because if you're experiencing lag or choppiness, uh, with your link cable, I'm not really sure how you're going to notice the absence of latency. But hey, I don't know. I don't really play rhythm games that much, so I don't know. But basically, the, what I'm trying to get at with this video is I slept on virtual desktop for over a year. Just because I didn't want to put the extra money in it, and there's something about my brain that says, Oh, you need to play this game the intended way. The way that you're supposed to play the game. I felt like virtual desktop was like, like playing an Xbox game on like a generic 
console that wasn't an Xbox. I don't know why, but it bothered me. It just, it didn't feel official, I guess. I don't know. It's dumb, I know. But now that I have virtual desktop and I've been playing Half-Life Alex and enjoying it so much, I look forward to playing it again. I've been playing again with developer commentary on and it's just an incredible experience. I can't wait to now maybe try Boneworks or some of the other games I've just been holding off on because I was like, man, if it's, if every game is this choppy, I don't think I really want to try to play them unless there's a way to play them better. And I finally got the way to play them better. Hopefully I don't jinx myself by saying that. I, I, I'm excited for VR again now, like I was over a year and a half ago. I can't wait to experience what else is out there and what other games can do. I've only really played Half-Life Alyx in a couple demos and maybe like a free to play game. I haven't really experienced that many VR games. If you do watch this video and you have any suggestions, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll uh, maybe I'll check out those games. I think what I'm trying to basically get at is if, if you wanna play VR games with your Meta Quest 2, just buy virtual desktop. I kind of feel like an idiot though for waiting so long to try virtual desktop. I just, I don't know what stopped me. Like I said, the, the whole, it doesn't feel official thing really bothered me. And that's, it's just a stupid way to think. Like, whatever works, do it. In the back of my mind though, it does still kind of bother me. Like, why doesn't this cable work right? Or why doesn't AirLink work right? Why doesn't Steam Link work right? Why doesn't the intended $80 way work correctly? That still kind of bothers me, but hey, at least we have a way to play these games pretty much flawlessly. And I, and I can't believe I waited so long to try it. Whoever made virtual desktop, we need to gather together and bake them cookies. But if you are thinking about playing some VR, I definitely recommend Virtual Desktop because it so far is leaps and bounds better than any other way I've tried to play so far. But I guess that probably does it for the video. I just wanted to sit and uh, talk about how stupid I feel for not trying Virtual Desktop sooner. And if you did happen to watch this video, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It does mean a lot to me. And hey, maybe I'll see you around on the internet again someday. Later.